Hey everyone, it's Pat and Frankie from Engine Power. Today we are going to be talking about EFI conversions of all types because we've done a few. Yeah, we have done a bunch on the show, but before we get to any of that, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the Power Nation channel, and click that bell so you get notifications about upcoming videos. Now, let's get into it. There's a bell? Yeah, at the bottom. When we talk EFI conversions, that means taking an engine that previously did not have electronic fuel injection and giving it that in some sort of form. Aftermarket systems have come a long way and it makes it easier and easier to do. First, we're gonna start off with throttle body conversions. Throttle body conversions are the thing that actually mimics a carburetor when it's on top of it because you still have the same intake manifold. You are taking that manual mixer valve off and you're converting it to work with EFI. Now, throttle bodies are very, very good. They actually mimic a carburetor very closely because the manifold doesn't know that a carburetor is not on it. So there are various ones that you can get. They're all work pretty much the same. They contain injectors like a regular port system, but they are inside the Venturi's themselves and they spray into it and it works just like a carburetor, bringing that homogenous fuel mixture into the intake manifold. And they're very, very easy to hook up. There's usually just a few wires and very simple instructions they are basically self-learning for the most part, so that means they have to have an O2 sensor and they have to have a few things that tell it what to do. And very, very easy to use hand programmers where you tell it a few things and it just works. They have been developed to be user-friendly. And that's good for a person like me who likes user-friendly stuff. There's just a few wires to hook up and it is ready to rock. And once it's done, it's done. You drive it and it works. Okay, so throttle body is very easy to install and get you off the ground and going pretty quickly with EFI. But if you really wanna start talking about getting into the real benefits of EFI with improved fuel control and tuning, then we start talking about port EFI. And port fuel injection is where the injectors are individually placed in each intake runner and they spray at the back of the valve for a really good fuel air mixture. And because each runner has its own injector, you can very precisely control the amount of fuel that goes to each one and have great fuel distribution. There's also a lot of tunability that you can get with that if you wanna do bank to bank tuning, individual cylinder, or simply drivability tuning where you're trying to maybe get a lot of power and a lot of fuel mileage. As far as getting one installed on an engine, I'll, pretty much every engine after 2000 came with port fuel injection from the factory, so they already are set up for it. But if you're trying to convert an old engine to EFI, the aftermarket has really stepped up and provided a lot of swap manifolds that you can just change out the manifold and with the correct system, have port fuel injection. You have aftermarket big block Chevy, small block Chevy, you know, pretty much the big three. There's manifolds available for all of those. You can even get aftermarket manifolds for some of the later model engines like LS, LT, Hemi, Coyote. If you're looking for a more performance oriented manifold, it still serves the same function, but you can up that performance. If you don't want to maybe drop the money on an EFI manifold, you can even send out your carbureted manifold to get converted. There's a lot of companies doing that service nowadays. So that's another option as well. So there's a lot of huge benefits to port injection over throttle body injection, but either way, you're getting that fuel injection benefit. Whatever type of fuel injection system you have, whether it be throttle body or port injected, you need to address your fuel system. Now, if you have a carburetor, they run at very low pressures, somewhere depending on the carburetor, between two and six PSI. Well, injection, all in common like that, they have to run a higher pressure to run the injector. So what you have to do is improve your fuel system by putting a lot bigger pump in it that generates enough pressure. And then you will regulate the pressure down with a regulator to the pressure that the EFI system recommends. Now that's important because like carburetors use jets and they use fuel pressure in the bowls. Now on an EFI system, the amount of pressure affects the injector sizing. And one of the questions we always get is how big of an injector do you need? Well, it really depends on what you're using it for. Some stuff is really based basically on power level. So if you're running the engine at a certain power level, you need a certain size injector to make sure that it operates correctly. And you can vary the fuel pressure and that can actually affect how the injector flows. So the biggest thing about any sort of injection system is having enough fuel system to run what you're using. Yeah, a great example of that is our GM 4.3 liter V6 that we did, we used a throttle body injection unit, but we needed it to have enough fuel, not only for the naturally aspirated power, but the more fuel it was going to need under boost. So 
how does the EFI know how much fuel to put in with the amount of air? Well, you tell it to a certain extent, but there's also a ton of data that it pulls from different sensors to be able to know how much fuel and when to spray it. The first basic one is crank sensor signal. For a throttle body unit, that's basically all they need because a lot of the sensors are integrated into the units nowadays, but it needs that crank sensor signal to know what RPM the engine is turning at so it knows to increase the fuel or decrease it along with that. Another important one is the cam sensor because the EFI needs that to know what part of the cycle the engine is on because we want that fuel injector to spray at the back of the intake valve when it is open and the air is rushing through the port. So it's really important to get the placement of both of those right if you're doing a port EFI system like on our Slant 6. We spent a lot of time setting up a proper crank trigger wheel on the front and making sure that the cam sensor was timed properly into the timing cover. We made that a permanent mount so it cannot move and it can't shift and it's very permanent. The other sensors that you might need are a coolant temp sensor so the ECU can adjust the fuel depending on the temperature of the engine, an intake air temperature sensor, which is really important because as the air is hotter and if it's entering the engine at a higher temperature, there's actually less oxygen in the air, it's less dense, so it will adjust the fuel for that as well. The ECU also needs a MAP sensor, and what that does is tell the pressure drop behind the throttle blades so it understands how much load the engine is under because as load goes up, it's increasing more power, and needs more fuel to go with that. The last basic one is the throttle position sensor because that kind of ties in with the MAP sensor and it lets the ECU know how much throttle you want, how much power you want, how much load the engine is under, and again, how much fuel it needs to put in there. Now, if you have a crank and cam sensor, you can also use that ECU to control ignition timing if you want, and that pairs with the fuel injection to give you a lot of control over how the engine operates. One of the biggest hitches in the giddy up about putting an EFI system on an older engine is wiring. Wiring scares the daylights out of people, including me, because a lot of the times it's very, very complicated to get it running. Back in the day when we would do these aftermarket systems, they were very, very complicated and the instructions were kind of sketchy at best. Nowadays, things are way, way better. A lot of plug and play things, a lot of very, very concise instructions that make these things a lot easier and it makes it so you can do it and you can do it right. Yeah, like if we're talking about throttle body injection units, they've really simplified them down. So nowadays there's usually only four or five wires that you actually have to hook up and it'll run. I mean, it's it's super simple. Uh, for things like these, like we said, it basically only needs to see a crank sensor. That's about the only thing that needs to be wired in. And then all the other sensors are usually integrated to the unit itself or their plug and play. So it's very, very simple. If we're talking about port injection, those are a little bit more complex because there's some other sensors that need to be wired in like a cam sensor, but even that has been simplified down. You're talking about a later model engine, they pretty much all have cam sensors in them. And if you're talking about retrofitting, a lot of companies have come out with drop-in distributors that have either crank and cam sensors in them or just the cam sensor and you can get a crank signal off an ignition box or something like that. If you're talking about building a custom harness, that's, that's, that's a big endeavor. That's usually what gets people a little anxious but it's really not that big of a deal. We actually had to do that for our Slant 6 Turbo project in order to run the coil on plug ignition and the port fuel injection. That engine never came with any of that. So it was easier just to build a custom harness. And as long as you have a wiring diagram for the ECU you're gonna be using and all the correct terminals, it's really just a matter of figuring out what the ECU needs to read in order to run, where it needs to get it from, and what wires need to go where to get that signal correctly. So as long as you take your time, use a wiring diagram, trace everything. It's really, it's really not that big of a deal. You can do it. It just takes a little bit of time. When everything is done and everything is hooked up and everything is running, then it comes to our absolute favorite part of all of this, the tuning. Now, with the advantages of an EFI system, it is very, very, very tunable, meaning any part of where the engine is running, whether it's part throttle, full throttle, tip in, idle, anything in between, it is very adjustable for both timing and fuel requirements. Basically, you're tuning it the same way as if you were had some sort of mechanical injection or a carburetor on it. It's the exact same thing. The engine does not know whether a carburetor or an EFI system is on it. All it cares about the quality of the air fuel mixture and if the timing is right. So the tuning part is easier 
with an EFI a lot of the times because there are some very intuitive things. The great part about these new systems is once they are running, they are self-learning, meaning they adjust to driving style. So they will take into account how the engine is being driven and it will build its own timing and fuel maps around that. If you run a lot at very, at very high speeds, wide open throttle, a lot of partial throttle street driving, it actually will customize itself around the way it is driven. Now it will build maps in different parts of that operation range, whether it is like putzing around, going to car shows, or you have this thing at a racetrack, it will actually make very, very small adjustments and build a very complete map. Yeah, the self-learning function of aftermarket ECUs is a really great feature. And if you just want to drop it on and go 95% of the time, you are able to do that no problem. But there are some weird applications like things that we have done, like our Slant 6 and our 4.3 liter V6. Both of those were turbocharged applications. You're not going to find a base file for those things. Base files are basically a starting point that a lot of manufacturers make for common applications, but something like that, that's off the wall. So you basically have to build an entire file from scratch. You have to build a fuel map and then build a timing map and then adjust it as you go for that engine. So you have to know a few certain things about the engine, like how much power it's gonna make, its displacement, all of the fuel requirements and things like that. And that'll give you a rough idea. And then you basically have to tune it on the fly as you are testing the engine. And what that means is that you're gonna need an actual software and a laptop of some sort to get into the ECU and program it. And that seems really daunting to a lot of people because there's a lot of things you can change and a lot of adjustments you can make, but aftermarket software is generally very simplistic. It's super easy to use and user friendly. You just have to be careful. You can really make big sweeping changes with two buttons, you know, a few keystrokes, and you can change a lot of things. So if you're tuning for max power on the dyno, you definitely have to be careful. You have to understand what the engine is doing. You know, it's not just a computer. You're actually changing the way the engine is behaving and what the fuel and timing are doing inside the engine. So you have to understand those things before you start making changes because you don't want to hurt anything inside the engine. Now, that sounds scary and there's some caution to be had but doesn't mean you can't get into it most of the software is free it's very easy to use like we said so don't be afraid to get in there start making changes and learning how to tune stuff you can do it just like anybody else i hope we have been able to demystify some of the things about putting an efi system no matter what it is on your ride and gives you the confidence to try one yourself yeah, and if you want to find out more information or learn more about EFI, you can always go back and watch the shows that we reference, and you can watch all the other EFI conversions that we've done here in Engine Power on Power Nation TV. So make sure that if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe, and turn the notifications bell on, and comment below what other topics you want to see us talk about.